Bigfoots. <laughs> recording. Oh, hell yeah. Yes. <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> Verbal opera. That was not an example. <laughs> See, the irony is he's going to just leave it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Got it out. You know, edit the video, cut that section out. And, yeah, anyway. No, you're right. I'll probably leave it here. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> verbal operants, folks. Um, it's the unit of analysis when we're talking about verbal behavior. Um, so when you think about verbal operant, just think about the operant conditioning, right? It's nothing different except we're using words, <laughs> um, which this is really fun, <laughs> words. Um, so anyway, we're using words. So keep in mind, we're talking about operant responding. So we're not talking about the individual words you are using. We're talking about classes of words, classes of, of, of responses, right? That's one of the tricky things to think about when you think about verbal behavior, because we have to break um, the verbal behavior down into small chunks. And those chunks are the things that get reinforced or punished and so on and so forth. So we're really, um, it, we're really trying to keep this as close to operant conditioning as possible. Um, so that unit of analysis that we're working at uh, has the same discriminative stimuli, the same consequences, the same response. So in other words, it has the three-term contingency um, present, but there's also the motivating operations and all the condition motivating operations. All that fun stuff uh, plays a role with the verbal operants as well. So um, we'll get into it more as we go on. So hopefully we'll um, clarify this for you a wee bit as we go.